leave us a voicemail at 931-99-GOBOT. You're watching Radio Free Cybertron. Latest Transformer news, reviews, and more, visit tformers.com. This is Radio Free Cybertron, episode 381, uh, recorded on September 3rd, 2014. I am your host, Brian Kilby, and uh, with me on the show this week, we have Melvar, Headmaster Don, Diecast, Not Shown, Rob Springer, and Paladin is back. Paladin. Hello. He's uh, been off the air because we haven't had superhero time. Yeah. It's, it's part of his, this is part of his community service. Yeah, so superhero time is not coming back. It's uh, going to be rebranded as a Greatest American Hero podcast. Yeah. In conjunction with yeah. the potential new series. So. Or, or the Look tick. Look at what's happening or, to me. It could, be, it could be the tick. I can't believe Leave it myself. myself. Get metal, Don. No, I just messed myself up. I'm on top of the world. Everybody now. Could have been something. One of the two. I don't know. I'm only 36. You're not a fan. I am a horrible fan. I'm not old enough to remember the greatest American hero. I wish I wasn't. Prime care. It was my grandmother's favorite show. I just see the reruns all the time. I need the hair, though. How he had awesome hair. Good lord, I want that hair. I want hair period again. I'm going to tell you something, guys. You miss it. I don't. Yeah. yeah, tell me about it. I don't yeah. like my hair. I, I told I, we can't yeah, see it. Shame that. <laughs> Look Shut at my up. thick, luxurious head of hair. Yeah. Once it started leaving, the razor blade came out. Like, you know, no, you're with it. Okay, and we were just joined by a wild John DeLuna. Hey, yeah. John, were you, I forgot. Were you going to TFCon? Uh, we're going to try, okay. but uh, I'll have to let you know closer to the event. Don and, oh, I, are, man. Don and I are going to road bad. trip. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, yes. baby. It's going to be fantastic. Is Don going? Yes. He's, ride, he's riding with me. Man. He's coming man. to my house. And Don. Oh, I've, got, I've got the time off from work. And <laughs> I, was kind of, I was kind of abrupt with him. It's like, so where are we going to meet? My house. <laughs> I, air hugs are a plenty when I see some folks. That's faux show. Listen, this is how it's going to go down. <laughs> I'm picking you right up, sir. Meeting at my house. Yeah, I was, I, I was like, like, like you, know, I'm, you take this highway, and I'll take this highway, and we'll meet. No, you're coming to my house. Well, I'm the littlest <laughs> guy, so that means Rob's probably going to be able to pick me up first. I'm well, pretty sure up. I could pick up Don and Brian. I could pick up everyone, really. Um, well, Doc asked you uh, right at once. Anyway. You couldn't at once, but I wouldn't be surprised. I could pick up everybody. So yeah. I, I, you, you're, you're probably, you're probably. It's a little tougher than I am, so. I'm a man. <laughs> I mean, I you know I've, I'm pretty good when it comes to that stuff, but you're bigger than I am, so. <laughs> and you lift I, stone for a living. <laughs> I, I I work with stone for a living, and my other hobby is lifting weights. <laughs> I have the, I have the lifting weights hobby, but I just don't lift like half ton. It's like you're looking at like slabs. Nah, I. Nah, that's not big enough. Let me put some more weight on here and really really make myself hurt for a while. Yeah. Yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard those words, actually, uh, Paladin. <laughs> hey, I just see Rob right? like, I need a spot. <laughs> Spots. Right. He never needs a spot. So, uh, <laughs> thanks to Paul Agnew, who pointed out that episode 381, it's the second time we've hit that number. Yay! Sort of. Oh, awesome. Fantastic. So I had recorded years ago, like in 2003 or 2004, an episode that was imaginary from 1992. And that episode was episode 381. And it was basically me sitting around watching DuckTales and recording it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so basically the show was much more freeform back then. <laughs> of course, there, there, there were worse things to watch than DuckTales. So. Well, no, I mean, I were, yeah. But so the, my favorite part of that famous ish episode was people thought that it was really me in 1992 recording myself talking about DuckTales, which is cool and all, but um, we do not have the technology. No, right? it, it, it was recorded. It was, it was supposedly Thanks. recorded on uh, cassette tape. Yeah. So 
But the thing is, people thought it was real. And I actually found at least one post on the internet referring to me as, like, the world's biggest internet loser. Because I sat around, back in the 90s, recording myself on tape, talking about DuckTales. And I think that's the really? greatest... Just one post like that? Yeah, just one. I think that's the greatest thing ever. I wish I could find that po- I wish I could find that. What a loser, man. Because it was like, it wasn't, it was someone random that I'd never heard of before. It's not like someone who had, like, um... Uh, an issue with me, which happened quite a bit back in the day for some reason. I don't know why. Um, mm. But yeah, mm. so uh, that was that was great. But yeah, so back in 1992, July, I there's a fake episode of me that was episode 381 talking about DuckTales. <laughs> DuckTales is like the best show ever. And uh, I, I will have a clip or two of that during our break. So yeah, I love DuckTales. Woo. It's a great show. Don't necessarily love the uh, remastered version for Xbox and PC so much, but I've been having was fun with it. I like the yeah. voice acting, but I li- I prefer the NES game. I-, I love the fact they got the original voice actor who's what ninety two. Yeah, to come out of retirement yeah. to do the voice for Uncle Scrooge and true and soon for a for Magic of Dispel. She's ninety five. Yeah, true wow. story. The reason um, they didn't have like. I, I, I heard this on another podcast. Uh, the reason Scrooge McDuck in any sort of uh, God, the mode where it shows you how to play the game, um, the reason Scrooge McDuck makes like, what? Yeah, say press X to make me jump or any crap like that was because part of the contracts Disney rules that the characters are never allowed to admit that they're self-aware that they're like not real. So it was like, so that's why it's like push X to jump or to be like some sort of clever way of going around because Disney characters are just not allowed to say stuff like that. Yeah, that's kind of weird. It's, it's like, I'm sh- if, look, man, Deadpool's a Disney character. Yeah. I don't know that that applies to Deadpool. Yeah. Probably not. So, uh, on the show this week, we have uh, we have some news. <laughs> There's not a lot. <laughs> Uh, All right. Like a little few, a few things. We have uh, This Week in History, and do we have uh, Q&A, Rob? Uh, we didn't get any this week. Wow. Okay. So let's let's what? make some crap up. Okay. And um, <laughs> so uh, I was a guest host on uh, TFYLP this week. Um, Listen to it today. What'd you think? I, you know, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Like, um, was I was I overpowering? Someone told me that I was trying to that I was trying to roll over people. No, no. You could just you could totally tell your straight laced way of doing things, but no, nah, you were. Fit in pretty well. I mean, okay. it seemed too out of place. Straight laced way of doing things. Are you saying I'm rigid? <laughs> no, I'm just saying you're like, all right, guys, back on point, and I'm, and they're all like, hey, there's string over there. <laughs> That's funny. It's kind of. I wonder... It's funny. Not a lot of people notice, but Optimus Prime is the leader of the Autobots. No, that's not that's not that show. <laughs> no, <laughs> there I'm are... just randomly inserting crazy. That's that's this show half the time. <laughs> not a lot of people know this. Not a lot of people Disney know. Disney characters are actually not real. I thought they were. Actually, I didn't know. Actually, um, but so the topic wa- the topic was uh, on the show was uh, the Transformers fandom, which is something I probably know way too much about. But you know more. I was hoping you would be on so that you could talk about trans fandom. Yeah. But, but the show kind of went uh, off um, topic a little bit, and uh, we started talking. It <laughs> got really depressing, and I don't know why I'm <laughs> suggesting this for our show. But, like, uh, Cause the end game. Because we're morbid. Because we're morbid. And uh, I thought it was an interesting uh, discussion, and uh, it's something I, I kind of want to get y- your opinion. You're got, you guys, y'all. Or you. Actually, you is the correct way to do a second person plural, I guess. What about Yules. you? Use, yeah. Yeah. Utes. But, hey, um, What's a Utes? Yeah, I don't know. No, that doesn't work around here, Don. We don't it's use that. us. But uh, basically, you know, maybe not like the end in the game, but when maybe we might um, decide to stop collecting. And Andrew Bowman in the chat suggested something like that. What yeah, is I, that? Like? I think his uh, comment was, you know... Have we ever had a what in the heck are we doing moment when it comes to collecting in the history? Yes. About 20 minutes ago, yes. <laughs> Thanks, pal. Uh, I have to be reminded people don't have toy collections. Oh, yeah. And uh, XV says... Let me, so XV is trolling us and queuing us up with comments during 
the live stream here. Oh, of course he is. Yeah, so if you, uh, NXP is watching live at uh, tfradio.net slash live or at tformers.com or at our YouTube channel, FYI. You should be too if you're not now. So, it's fun. We have a great chat. But he says, and I quote, You ought to throw out a reference to McFeely's reading of a scene from More Than Meets the Eye 32 on YouTube. So, yeah, you guys need to check that out. Everyone is telling me about it. I haven't had a chance to check it out yet, but it's supposed to be phenomenal. It, it is. It is, it audio, is wonderful. I love it is that. audio gold. McFeely is awesome. We love McFeely. Not everybody knows this. It's a rare fact. YouTube has videos. What? Since when? I, t- I know, right? Uh, and, and MTV plays music, plays music videos. Yeah, Rob, pull, pull the other one. Don? MTV2 plays music videos. No. no that's the, the, I don't that's, watch much TV. That, that, that's an urban rumor. So I just Outside retwe- scares me. I just retweeted the video to our fans, and I'll link to it in the show. Oh, I'd like to watch it. If you are following us on Twitter at TF Radio. I'm trying to get all the plugs out at the beginning of the show because people will actually hear them. Uh, but yeah, so uh, sort of, let's at the end, we'll talk about a little bit about our collecting habits and how we're going to stop doing it. Could be, we might need an intervention, Don. Stop. Rob, yeah, it's <laughs> nah. I'm a yeah. big guy. I'm gonna take some folks down. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and jump to uh, this week in history. <clears throat> so, God, it's like 18 minutes into the show. So, uh, <laughs> Rob's back. No, it's okay. So, this week in history, in 1986, this week, Five Faces of Darkness debuted, ushering in the greatest season ever. Far and away, the best season yes. of Transformers that's ever existed. So, uh, 20- those are good series of episodes. Admittedly, I didn't watch it until about 10 years after it had aired, but it was still good. I love, I love Five Faces of Darkness. I haven't actually sat down and watched it in like ten years. Uh, uh, maybe a I, year. I don't particularly have a fondness for that. Five, no. Is it because is it because there's no headmasters in it? No, just it just. Where's Mako? There's there's too much wheelie in it. No, just, yeah, you can't argue with that problem. He doesn't like all the suicide attempts in, in Five Faces of Darkness. I, I, just, I, just, I, I just think I just think I just don't like the Five Faces of Darkness because it just adds a whole another layer out of nowhere that really never seemed to be consistent. So when you were saying Five Faces of Darkness to stay in history, for some reason my mind just flashed and I got like. Metallica's For Whom the Bell Tolls, <laughs> and then like f- metal flashes of the cast of the Golden Girls. <clears throat> so, actually, so let, let me do this. Golden so, <laughs> Girls. So, we always, I always assume <laughs> that people know what in the heck we're talking about. And people learn through context, but I'll just share this. So, Five Faces old. of Darkness. Five, yeah, oh, oh, we're old. Man. I know, I know. Yeah, just read the script. So, Five Faces of Darkness was the uh, five part episode that debuted. Uh, after Transformers the movie, it helped bridge Transformers the movie to the rest of season three. Uh, it wasn't as necessitated as like I don't know Scramble City in Japan was, but um, because they didn't get they didn't get Transformers the movie, so twenty Transformers twenty ten made no sense without something to bridge it. It wasn't so much useful for bridging as opposed to Backstory. okay, here's the New World Order. Yeah. But it, expl- it explained a lot of things, like, you know, yeah. specifically the Quintessons. So, so uh, who else but me is thinking two years from now we'll see the movie Transformers 5 with the subtitle Faces of Darkness? You know, no. that's actually not, that, that's, that's totally plausible. Yeah, it pretty much is. And people are like, oh man, Quintessons, like, no, no, no. And I'm, I'm wondering to somehow incorporate, since I didn't do it for the fourth movie for Transformers... They'll have, they'll, have a fi- they'll have a five in there for the S. Trans five mores. Or something. Tom Sizemore. <laughs> you know, they're going to say, we're going to be like, oh, oh, dude, oh, man, the Quintesson. It's like, the Keepers, son of, I quit. But now, here's the thing, though. Michael Bay Quintessons could look awesome. Yeah, actually, you know, that's a good point. They probably would. But because- we'll see them a second. <laughs> Actually, we already met them. Their name is Galvatron, and they will be voiced. Somehow, Galvatron by... created the t- created the Transformers, even though he only debuted in the last movie. I was about to uh, say something sarcastic, but I realized that might be pretty hilarious. Like, here's the Quintessons, and they're all like racial stereotype voices. Like, that might be kind of fun. They've actually he's gotten better about that. Yeah, it's like that's 
probably true. You know, what's strange is they could get maybe uh, someone that, like, say, oh, I don't know, Chris McFeely, who does really good voices to do <clears throat> some voices for the Quintessons. He is going to pay Meatloaf $5 to do it over Skype. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty, pretty true. He's worked with them before. Yeah. Yeah. So, also, in 2004, that was, which was, uh, Ten years ago, no, two thousand three, two thousand three, two thousand three, eleven years. That ago. That was eleven years ago. The uh, Armada official guidebook is published in the U.S. by Reader's Digest, and I saw this item. I'm like, crap! I didn't know that existed, so I clicked on the link, and I'm like, oh, I own that. Yeah, I had it. <laughs> which is exactly how. Know. Oh, which is how really? this crap works. I have yeah. no memory of this. Look at this video game. I don't think I have this. <laughs> that happens all the time now. I'm so like, old. Open up a Rubbermaid container. Oh, look at all this crap I own. Yeah, I don't buy things a lot of times when I'm out like at conventions because I probably already own it. That was my problem at Shardicon and like Savcon before it and the last BotCon. I look around and I say, I got all this. So I bought something uh, from um, Insane Galvatron. I'm like, oh. awesome, I really wanted this. I've always wanted this. I got home. I already had it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted this for the longest time. Oh, I no just, way to dirty there. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, good. I wanted a new one. That one's kind of floppy. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. what she said. <laughs> pretty great. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, yeah, I already had that. So uh, let's see here. So there's more Master, uh, Masterpiece Star Saber news. Um, Hooray! Yeah, yay. Piece of Saber. Yeah. And the most Master important piece of saber. thing, the price. 170, 170 bucks at BBTS. Just 50 cents over too way much. Way below what I was expecting. Yeah, me too. Yes. I, I was expecting at least one ninety nine to two oh nine, most everywhere U.S. retail is what I was expecting. I'm yeah, sure this price is going to change. Eight. Yes, I'm sure this price is going to change. I don't think it's going to change because how much is Masterpiece uh, Ultra Magnus at BBTS? It's probably mm, around the same Star price. Saber. Yeah, it's like so it's one, about yeah, it's twenty dollars like more expensive than Star Saber. Okay, and it's they're about the same size, right? They're about oh. the same size, and they're about the same price in um, yen. And they're about the same character. Star Saber does more stuff. Yes. But now, I, 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 mentioned, I mentioned this in the pre-show. It's possible with Star Saber having a more visible lead-up time, they were able to get a better accurate judge of pre-orders. So maybe BBTS has the quantities needed to trigger this price Do they price this oh. stuff based on pre-orders, though? Like, I don't know. That's a legitimate question. I, do they take into consideration pre-orders from retailers, or do they just price it based on cost? And, I think it's all and then, cost. And then mark up. Well, I, I don't see them... Like, basing crap on the price of the pre-order seems like a very Matty Collector thing to do, not like Takara Tomy, which is a, actually a really big, let's important company. Let's not be company. too insulting here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, it, it, it could go either way, because... If Takara says, hey, we have this figure coming out, these are the tiers that we're looking to sell, and if you buy this larger tier, you do get a, dis a slight discount off of the cost. Because they'll say, for X number more, we'll save this much money, and we'll have more units to sell. So it could, they could be doing it as a step-up program with the discounts increasing as you increase in quantities. That's how... Uh, Collectors Club was finally able to get these troop builder sets for a reasonable co convention price because they were able to meet the threshold quantity orders. So maybe that has something going on with this. There are a lot of intricacies when it comes to retail and manufacturers manufacturers selling to uh, retailers. So, I mean, I don't pretend that I know. I, I was just curious. Oh, yeah. yeah Is I, it I, wrong to say or to think that Masterpiece Star Star Saber will sell less units than Masterpiece Ultra Magnus? No. Uh, I, I'd say... It, go ahead. It depends on how you're looking at it, Diecast, because if you look at total numbers, I think they're going to be very similar because the Magnus... Is, Ultra Magnus is better known in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Star Saber is better known in Japan. So you're going to be looking at... Is he really, though? 
well, different markets will do different figures, but I think with both characters being mm. he was very s- prominently featured in 2010 in Headmasters. I don't think he's more well known. Plus, I mean, he's had homages through like every Transformer series yeah, he's for the last the 15 ones. years. He's I don't think he's more well known. The difference is is Star Saber was was a commander. You know, he was an actual leader of the Autobots. So I think and there's he more did stuff. I think there's more cachet prob- probably with Star Saber, but I don't think he's I don't I wouldn't say that he's more well known. I don't no. think he'll sell. My point was I, I I really don't think he'll sell as much as Ultra Magnus does. So if you're basing it on sales <laughs> numbers, base it on the look of the toy. I would say Star Saber would sell better. No, no, I would lay more odds on a U.S. chance of Magnus than Star Saber. Oh right yeah, Don, like Don's, oh, Don's, yes, Don's, Don's 100 correct, and in the U.S. Ultra Magnus is way more popular, and Star Saber may be more popular in in Japan. I don't know. I, I would say I don't know that he's more well known. I would guess oh. he is. Isn't he? Uh, he just coming out in masterpiece because he won that fan vote. Yeah, but he yes. won. He, he won that fan vote against like people like was it Superfire Convoy? I mean, who would Armada who would Prime. who would vote for Superfire Convoy? Don. It's picking on Don Knight. I'm sorry. I'll shut up. Don, go ahead. They had no, a just, Max. Stop no, in the mailbox. <laughs> No, no, I mean, it's just, you know, I just think if you look at the total worldwide sales, you're going to be surprised that they're going to be probably very close because the Magnus sales in the U.S. by people buying, people buying Magnus in the U.S. and importing it will offset what they don't buy for Star Saber. So, Don, I think of the guys here, you probably have the best idea, maybe Paladin, too. So, in Japan... Obviously, Star Saber is a Japanese, you know, creation. Uh, do, do, they, do they see Ultra Magnus as too Americanized? So he seems like a more of an American, like I, I don't know, Duke from GI Joe sort of character, kinda. Then, well, I think he, I think from a nostalgic standpoint, he'll have some draw over in Japan. But I think since he died in Headmasters, when Ultra Magnus dies, yes. I mean, you know, I, you know, it's just he wasn't in much up until Robots in Disguise when he returned as God Magnus. So, which really, you know, so I don't, I don't, I think, I think nostalgia standpoint, he'll do well in Japan, but and I, he has I, been yeah. featured in most every series. Yeah. In recent years, he so the, there's he was definitely the, a connection on some level. He was there the second masterpiece things. toy. No. What if KFC puts out, like, a Star Saber? <laughs> They'll call it, like, Citizen Turd or something, you know? Like, well, now, well, no, they're not KFC anymore. It's their new name? Oh, yeah, Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> KTC. Now, well, now, here's the weird Kentucky thing. Church's Taco Chicken. Chicken. Church's Toys. Now, if you look at Star Saber and Ultra Magnus, they're the same basic toy. I mean, one's a jet, one's a car, but they both se- separate and combine. I mean, they're both... Ultra Magnus is like a Star Saber for the road, and Star Saber is Ultra Magnus for the sky. <laughs> that's true. Wow, well, that's the like figures because the cab doesn't have its own robot. Yeah, no. there's that, which well, definitely gives Star Saber the advantage, which is why I pre-ordered him instead of Magnus. You know, IDW had the same idea too. So, yeah, Don has a point. So, so we're we're wait, talking. Wait, 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 Rob, say that again. <laughs> I said, Don has a point. I hear that so rarely. It's so nice. Don has a point. always got your back, Mr. Ferguson. You know that. So, yes. we're talking all around this, but are, is there any news to speak of? Around <laughs> the, I mean, uh, I saw, Transformers World. I saw like three or four stories post about Masterpiece Star Saber this week, but is there anything that we haven't already beaten to death? The uh, that Marvel Star thing with Wheeljack. Well, no, no, no. Star Saber specifically. Oh, Star Saber. Yeah, Star uh, Saber specific. We're, we're, we'll get to that. The Brain Master. Is we talked about that last week. Yeah. Oh, we did. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah, because it's started. tiny. Okay, so Paladin uh, mentioned the next thing. So uh, we are getting. Oh, I was going to ask with Star Saber, what do we think the odds are on a masterpiece victory, Leo? Two years from now. I was thinking about that earlier today. That'd be. Because it seems like it's going to have to be. <clears throat> well, how how much time has Star Saber been in production now? But we'll yeah, talk. We first we had me. How many people would spend a hundred bucks on a masterpiece victory, Leo? Not many. Yeah. Well, 
Well, if they if they if they can refine the victory Leo design to not look like he's wearing Claude Hopper nine thousands, I mean, it's just and be more of a streamlined look like the anime. It's just one of those things where victory, you know, masterpiece guys, the smaller cars, you know, they're still going for the safe bets, the prowls, the side swipes, you know, the wheeljack, bumblebee. It's like Star Saber's like, yeah, oh yeah, Japanese market, victory Leo. They're like, not as, is he, I mean, does he really have that much familiarity but, in Japan? Victory Leo, also, yes, but, but see, okay. But he's, see the, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, no, no, you, you go ahead. But remember it's kind of like what Hasbro said about certain characters. If they do a star scream, they're going to try to work in at some point a matching Skywarp and Thundercracker. Right. If they do an Insecticon, they're going to try to get Shrapnel Bomb Zone Kickback at some point because they know there are certain groups that belong together. If you think of Star Saber, you think of Victory Leo because that yeah. entire last half arc of Victory. I don't know that the economy. Scale, yeah, uh, scale works out here. That's also Hasbro and not. Well, know, that's also fifteen dollars at Walmart versus two hundred online. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. But, but I'm plus but you I'm have to saying, consider what they can reuse these as for the eventual second release. But we're, we're also using American logic here. Yeah, <laughs> Takara yeah. Takara Takar th Takar thinks differently. Yeah, and they, you know, one thing we haven't mentioned is we. There's also the Chinese market. You know, China's right yeah. over there. China's yeah. right over there, and there are a lot of Transformers fans in China. And, yeah. uh, you know, they, they'll they buy this stuff, so. No, I'm just, just you know, thinking that's got to be a real hard sell for a Masterpiece Victory Leo. Yeah, well, I imagine yeah. someone will try to sell it, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, just... and there's other safe bets that they can go with before Next, that. Next, from Church's Chicken Toys. I, oh, yes. I, I, I'm, Lion. I'm sure we'll have a third party in the works before very long. Church's yeah. Yeah, it's lion. Even as just an add-on kit instead of you know a whole transforming victory. Round. And there'll be like two heads, Except too tall. Immediately. And so there'll Citizen be a platform. Power Ranger from K Church's Chicken Toys. Okay, so let's go ahead and j jump to uh, Marlboro. 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 So yeah, <laughs> so the uh, Marlboro. However you, you say. Got a cool cigarette on your Marlboro. The Diaclone repaint slash retool of uh, Will Jack. So um, yeah. do we have to say it is? Diaclone. <laughs> Do we have to say that? That's what So that is the. You can just uh, say it is awesome. That's the next announced um, masterpiece toy. It's getting its own number. Does he have yeah. a, the pointy head? I forget. Yes. It does look oh, like a different head. It is a different head. It is. I now, don't understand why they just didn't make this an exclusive and you know make no, it well, a M for Marlboro or something. Well, they, they now the Wheeljack exclusive repaint will be Slicer now. Yeah, yeah, but okay, why not give Slicer his own number now? If you're going to give him his own number, everyone gets their own number. Well, okay, now I don't get the problem. What the problem is with the numbers because they've got the. We mentioned this in the pre-show. The number of repay potentials for a Wheeljack mold are limited unless they get out of the box like a shattered glass Wheeljack, which would be Slicer in some in some in some continuities. So why not make the Marlboro version? a wide release because they're going to have to get the money back from the mold anyway. And again, for the people who don't know, Marlboro is the, uh, he's basically a Marlboro, which is the cigarette brand colored <clears throat> like, like the pack of cigarettes or something like a race car. So basically he's Will Jack, the race car painted like a pack of okay, Marlboro so cigarettes, which well, now, back back in the eighties, that was a uh, that was a thing that you could get away with. Well, now did did his Diaclone toy have stickers that one of them was? I mean, did they have racing stickers and one of them was the Marlboro brand? I I don't know. Uh, Anthony would know, but he's not on. So, if so, we're gonna see repro labels of that then. Oh, oh well, I'm certain. I, I looked yeah. at the photos between this and the original toy, and it's like pretty much spot on except for the marlboro right above the lancia on the uh on like the front of the bumper yeah, the that's, hood area that's not there yeah that's the only thing that's missing that that if you look at the original toy so nope. that's an easy fix for uh rep repro labels but as you uh, on the video if you're watching live and you should be or watching the video, you'll see that uh, it does have the alternate head. It's it's shaped a little differently than the actual um, original toy, but um, it's it's definitely not Will Jack. Neat. It's, 
Ooh, yeah. Scaleface has a good idea. Masterpiece Wheeljack repainted as Big Daddy. That would be awesome. <laughs> oh, just... guys. What if we're getting a Cybertron downshift? Masterpiece. Yeah. I mean... Oh, even worse. What if we're getting well, no. Energon downshift? It's the same toy. <laughs> they just released the same toy, but put a sticker on the box that says downshift. Exactly. Or, wait, even better, Cliff Jumper. <laughs> Do you see how this is working? So, I just went over to tfu.info, and we have a photo of uh, Anthony's Marlboro... I can't say it! Marlboro. Marlboro, Marlboro yeah, whatever. It is hard to say. Yeah. So. The, the, one thing, the one thing about this character, about, I like the face and I like the double launchers. That gives it a definite, different vibe than Wheeljack. It's just the color scheme is so... Suck on this. No, you know, it's just, it's not cohesive to me. It, it's Full just me. flavor missile. <laughs> no, I, I like the color scheme. It's, it's, it's like, Will Jack is a more cohesive <laughs> pattern and, and design layout. This is kind of... Like, Don, in our 21st century liberal sensibilities, we just can't associate with with them well, having a tobacco we brand. Just can't, well, we can't have cigarettes saying, on toys, I would, man. I yeah. would be more willing to... I would be more willing to get an Autobot symbol for that figure and have that as a G2 wheeljack. But, Don, if you had to choose between a cigarette transformer and a meth transformer, isn't the cigarette transformer the lesser of two evils? Sure. How did we get into, get into this discussion? What about, a vape, what about a vape transformer? I wish it was a pack of cools. Oh, yeah, that would be awesome. But hey, that would be a cool, 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 cool color scheme. <laughs> exactly. Well, cool then would it kid. be a transforming yeah. camel? Oh god, we talked about that. What would the humps be? Oh, let's not let's not say it. Okay, so um, now if he was in the cartoon, you know his voice should be a trachea thing like hey, there's <laughs> Megatron. Yeah, his name is Stoma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh my god, Megatron! We are so going to get those Autobots. It's just going to be beautiful. It's going to be oh, oh. sounds like an eight year old. <laughs> that sounds like my mother in law. That's pretty. <laughs> started out Jewish. <laughs> Oh my goodness! It is so yeah. delightful. Yeah, I, hope, I would love for that for that Septicon uh, insignia. You could flip that to be an Autobot. You know, so you can my sweat up. Why would you want to make it an Autobot? Well, G G two Wheeljack. If, if you wanted, if you wanted to repurpose it. On the AT you need a new head CL, because that, that head Autobots just screams Decepticon. Guys. Okay, so one one at a time. What? Uh, Melvar. Cigarettes. Melvar. What did you say? Uh, just telling Don, if he wanted to make that a G2 wheeljack, you'd need a new head because that that's a Decepticon head. Yeah. Mm. That's true. That's true. In, in the in the ATTCM, you know, they used to say that the Autobots were the bad guys. So, you know, it was <laughs> it's, it's okay. I can be an Autobot. I'm going to stand over here and don't y'all don't mind if I smoke, do you? I'm going to smoke. Fire? I'm going to smoke. Yeah, just, just don't mind me. Yeah, three Virginia Slims stuck in each tooth over here. This is like the worst Muppet ever. <laughs> you know, actually, that's the thing. So I was watching uh, Ghostbusters 30th Anniversary Edition. Uh, the that's a good movie. It, I, one, Ghost, Ghostbusters is my all-time favorite movie. I've watched oh, yeah. it countless times. I know it word for word. It's it's in my top ten. I know it scene for scene, but I've never seen it on the big screen. So there are a few things oh. I was able to pick out that I never saw before, which was really awesome for me. But... And I, I, you know, watching it in the big screen was a chance to look look at the movie again, though, with sort of new eyes. And the fact, the you know, them running around smoking like in hotels and stuff, and or working, it was just like really, sh you know, shocking. You know, thirty years ago, it's changed a lot as far as like cultural norms go. I still remember when I was a kid, people openly smoking at workplaces and stuff, or like, in supermarkets. Yeah. 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 Oh. I one of my favorite movies is Jaws. Yeah. And they they actually have they're smoking in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean it was not I remember when um uh, when I was sixteen, my job at McDonald's, we had the smoking section. Well, and I was like, this is a kid's place. My well my job twelve years ago we did for a couple of years and you know, I, I didn't don't have never smoked, but I had several friends that did, so they would go out and I would just hang out with them out there, you know, on break. It was kinda of yeah. fun. Well, here's the here's the thing, Brian. My high school had a smoker and dipper area. Mine did too. Outside, outside. Of course, it's North Carolina. Yeah, Mine but didn't we were also that. in high school like sixty years ago, so it wasn't that long. 
Okay, so on uh, the uh, Camelcast, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, talk about <laughs> Generation Leader what, Class. What's Gen- your favorite vapes? God, there are vape stores popping up everywhere yeah. where you guys are at, like they are here. Yes. So, and and I, I've started seeing restaurants that, say, that are not, not allowing even e-cigarettes in them. Good. So it's still smoke. Yeah. yeah. So now, uh, in Detroit, we have hookah bars. We oh, got those yeah. too. I don't have any around here. But uh, so the vape stores are replacing all of the sweepstake places. Y'all don't mind if I vape, do you? That's a, that's a little, I got the cotton candy card. So, so uh, Generations Leader Class Jetfire has been cited in Canada. Oh my lord, that's up north, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the one time I wish I was Canadian. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, it's, it's, Land it's, of the perky eyes. Now the what? thing that bothered me about this <laughs> is <laughs> Apparently in U.S. it was it was delayed. So how did Canada get it? Well, now can- Canada gets screwed over a lot by, yeah. yes, by the fair toy. So, so they deserve a couple. I mean, they got some of the AOE stuff first. Yeah, fair is so, fair. I mean, so, I mean, I mean, they they deserve. Wait, wait, good. that's that's not a good thing that they got the AOE stuff. First. Yeah, he said he said they get screwed over a lot. Oh, well, yeah. that's, I know, mean, like you know, like like Evasion Prime and. Grimlock, and, you know, some of the better toys. They, we get comics in our generations. They don't get anything and pay the same price. I mean, let let, the, let them have the, the, the guy first, you know? Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah. It, it's all good in the end, you know? I may regret the price eventually, but I'm sticking to my pre-order for the Takara version right now. I know. I'm, I'm weighing my options on that, too. I just can't deal with that hideous chrome. Yeah, I don't like the chrome. I can deal with the both. chrome. I can deal with the chrome for like still just going to Walmart. Really, that's still really weird that the Takara one is the one without chrome. I know. Yeah. Someone's like, "Oh, we got them. We we got them, guys. We did good job." <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, no third party news that I really want to talk about this week. <laughs> there's, 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 there's nothing. There's not much in the news this week. So there's more Dinobots for, for everybody. Here from Church's Chicken Toys, we have Citizen uh, Sword. Citizen Sword. So um, we. This uh, looks kind of funny, but you know he's like a hundred. Yeah, it's it's kind of a down period right now. So uh, even toy wise, yeah. I skipped out on lockdown this past weekend. Uh, I would buy yeah, it. Yeah, you didn't miss much. I know. I would buy it if it was packaged in uh, vehicle mode. I don't want to open it. I don't want to transform it. It's hideous in robot mode. I would <laughs> keep it if it or buy it if it was packaged in vehicle, but it's not. So screw I've, it. Lockdown really, ever. really, really makes me miss the Human Alliance subline from Revenge of the Fallen. I think he'd be perfect for that. Yeah, I could see that. Like with a little mini Kelsey Grammer figure that goes with him. Hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a shame. Yeah, I didn't think about that. That's a good thought there. Yeah, but it's kind of a down period. We actually don't have any Q and A for with uh, Rob this week, so we're going to skip that. Uh, well, I got a question. Y'all, y'all mind if I smoke? <laughs> Sure. It's, yeah, open a window, you know. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so basically... The other day I fought it, a little smoke came out. It was kind of disgusting. Wow. Okay, so, uh, yes, yeah, so I was on TFYLP with Don this week. Don, so pe- for people who don't know, uh, Don's on Transformers for Your Listening Pleasure uh, each and every week uh, as one of the co-hosts. And I was... When I, when I can connect. And I, yeah, I, I had problems with google plus myself uh so uh i was a guest this week we we're talking about the transformers fandom because i t- kind of had some history with it um yeah. and uh but we kind of we kind of went off topic for a few minutes and talked about like the end game and i think it got really depressing so i thought heck why not let's just do, let's steal that topic and talk about it on rfc because if anybody can like make something depressing even way more depressing it's us <laughs> give me a minute yeah so um uh, and it, also uh just because there's not a lot, a, lot, a lot going on this week andrew in the chat it's just hey why don't you guys talk about uh like some of your what in the heck moments why why are we doing this and when it comes to collecting and i thought those really kind of tie together so well, you know i just had to put something on the shelf yeah yeah so we'll go, we'll go ahead and take a break uh i will play a little bit of that uh, episode that i promised uh, that i would and uh after that we'll come back and we'll depress you <laughs> and ourselves 
I promise. Oh, yeah. We'll be back in just a minute. Radio Free Cybertron will return after these messages. Stan Bush here, and I dare you to check out Radio Free Cybertron. So, you know, as I alluded to earlier, back in the good old days, I had a lot less to talk about. We are kind of spoiled today with um, news, <laughs> movies, TV shows, toys. You know, back then, back when this was recorded, um, we had, gosh, Robots in Disguise had just wrapped up. So... We were getting ready for, or it was around the time of Armada, I suppose. Yeah, so I didn't really keep to a format. So with that said, I want to play just a few seconds of uh, this original episode 381. And uh, thanks to Paul Agnew for pointing out that um, this actually existed. And uh, thanks to XV who originally came up with the idea back, God, I guess, in 2002. Let me explain what this is really quick. So we had nothing to talk about, so to speak, in 2002, at least relative to today. This episode is about how we had nothing to talk about, so to speak, in 1992, relative to 2002. Just think about that for a second. <laughs> I was appreciative of all the stuff that we had to talk about. Because during the first run of RSC, it was a transformative time. We went from basically having nothing to having plenty. And today, for lack of a better phrase, the cup runneth over. So God knows what will happen, you know, ten years from now. But, yeah, again, I want to thank XV for the suggestion because I think this came out really well. And my wife just walked by and asked why this is so bad. It's supposed to be. Take a listen. You're listening to Radio Free Cybertron. This is Brian Kilby here with you. Uh, it is July 20th, 1992, and uh, it's summertime. And finally, I have a chance to do another RFC. It's been a while, I know. It's been a few months. But I um, got all the yard work done and everything. And uh, something to celebrate, I uh, went out to Big Lots and found uh, some Transformers. Yep, you can still find them if you look hard enough. Uh, let's see here, what did I find? I found a, uh, a Hot Rod Patrol, some Micro Masters. I guess you remember those. Uh, so I got, like, Big Daddy and uh, Greaser, Trip Up, and Hubs. So if you don't remember those guys, they're little Micro Masters, and I'll have more on that later. I also found an Action Master Blaster. Uh, that was pretty cool. And uh, that was pretty much it. Uh, but uh, we, we do have something to celebrate. Uh, uh, Transformers aren't completely dead. It's not as you would think. I know it's been, what, the comic ended a year ago now, back uh, 91, issue 80 of a four-issue miniseries. I still kind of get all soft when I think about that. Okay, I uh, really don't have anything else for the show, but, you know, it, it's been a great show. It really has. I mean, this is like the longest RFC yet. I've done 380 of them so far, and they're all tucked away in my basement, and uh, sometimes somebody will listen to them. But I uh, just want to thank you for uh, listening, uh, whoever you are, and um, I'll welcome you back next week. And uh, for Radio Free Cybertron, this is Brian Kilby, and I want to just uh, end things today with the number one song in the land, and uh, according to the top 40. Oh my God, Becky, look at her butt. Well, um, that sure was, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, I, I really miss, I really miss the old days when I wasn't so um, rigidly tied to a certain format. <laughs> Thankfully, a Rob Springer's back to help screw it up. Let's get back to the show. 
You can hear our show on Stitcher Smart Radio. Stitcher allows you to listen to your favorite shows directly from your iPhone, Android phone, BlackBerry, or Palm phones. On demand and on the go. Don't have Stitcher? Download it for free today at Stitcher.com or in the app stores. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Radio Free Cybertron has teamed up with Kokomo Toys and Collectibles in Kokomo, Indiana. If you're in the Kokomo area, visit our store for a huge selection of new and classic toys. Visit online at www.kokomotoys.com for our address and store hours. While you're there, check out our listing of pre-order items as well as visit our eBay store. Visit us at www.kokomotoys.com. That's K-O-K-O-M-O-T-O-Y-S.com. We're also on Facebook. We now return to Radio Free Cybertron. Okay, we're back. So I'm depressed now. The dog right. says this is going to kill me, but I don't care. I'm going to keep on smoking it. <laughs> it's healthy. You're not doing it. Okay, so um, it's a browner than a box of rice. So I don't want to. I don't want to pick on Kim's aunt, but I know that she will never ever hear this. Uh, and Kim's not listening right now. So, like, Kim's aunt is, like, a heavy smoker. And she said, and I swear to God, she said, I'll change over to vaping once once the FDA weighs in and says it's it's good for you. And I'm like, you're already sucking hot s- particles into your lungs. How? What? Ugh. Okay. So... But I don't want to. I, I don't want to. We're talking way too much about smoking. It's just uh, well, the Marlboro thing. I know, yeah. but it's just like I, I can't help it. You know, I, I, I get a pack in my hands, and you know, I, you know, you know, some stuff comes on the TV. Next thing you know, it comes to a pack. Uh, I'll, sw- I'll swear that I'm stopping. Is I put down the Virginia Cools, Meredith, and Meredith, you know, put down the Virginia Cools, and next thing I know, I got a stogie. So actually, you know, that's kind of. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really stretching here, but it's kind of like collecting. You, you kind of want to stop sometimes. Like, I wish uh, I could stop doing that voice. It's starting to hurt. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I'm completely out of room. Mm-hmm. I'm like completely out of room. I don't have room to put anything else. And on the show a couple weeks ago, I canceled some pre-orders, of which I ended up ordering a couple anyway. <laughs> like uh, uh, Salamore, who's awesome. And Vintage Mania King, who's not. And <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, he's not. Yeah. Um, but uh, sometimes I question, why do I do this? Um, <clears throat> and eventually, at some point, I will have to stop. Whether I stop because I'm stopped by Mother Nature, or I stop because I've purchased, bought everything that I wanted. I mean, that'll, that could potentially happen. If I'm specifically collecting something, like uh, our friend Ron, uh, Rob, he collects G.I. Joe, a real American hero. Right. And I think he has like three or four figures <clears throat> left, some, some small ridiculous number, and he collects G1. Uh-huh. Once he gets all of his real American hero in G1, he's done. Well, it's just not that. He also collects the core. How do you keep up with the core? <laughs> I don't know. Wow. He does. That's- that's that's impressive because they get they get waves. I mean, when when they change, uh, how do you I, know? I mean, it's when they change their motif and they and they change the the, the wave that's out. The whole thing changes. Yeah, it's, he's. I see him posting in like core groups. Like, like I'm looking for a this this, and I'm like, they have names. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's kind of funny. I was at Walmart a couple weeks ago, and they're, these kids, I swear, they're like seven seven years old. And they're looking at Core, and they said, where's the G.I. Joe? And I like got a, I kind of got happy. I'm like, awesome. But uh, it's been sad because there, there is no G.I. Joe. You know, real talk, Have how long has the Core been going on without any of us? I'm going, that's a very long-running toy line. And, and, and there's no media and, at all. Yeah. There's no, there's no advertisement. There's no. Well, movie. they're cheap. Very. But uh, but yeah. So there, it's going to come a point where we'll just stop. I know lots of people that just have stopped 
Uh, on TFYLP, Don had mentioned what a moment it was for the fandom when the Hartmans sold off their collection, or the bulk of their collection. And that, that was a big deal. Some people may not realize it, but that's a big deal. The Hartmans, who had the best collection, at least, you know, in the Western Hemisphere, <laughs> um, <laughs> sold off their collection. That that means something. I mean, know these, that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, three words. Abominous gift sets. You know, the thing is with them, their story is, everyone's story is different. Like, you know, it's, we, we can't, it's kind of hard for, uh, especially newer people, the time of BotCon was a whole lot different then than now. You know, that was just like the second year of FunPub BotCon. How many times did they have financial problems over running BotCon and then the whole 3H thing and all that? It's like, maybe we're like, you know what, enough with this, you know, just for their own versus I'm tired of it. I think they're probably just tired of it. Maybe. It's always got to be a factor for some people. Well, I, I, I now, granted, I've, I've known John and Carl since '94 when Botcon started. I'm not a close friend, but I, I, I have known them. Right. And they both just had personal projects that they that they were moving on to, and I think uh, one of them was was in the process of getting married. Hmm. Uh, so you know that kind of put a lot of things in perspective. You know, but I'm saying when we found out the in between the times between the bot cons when the Hartmans announced the next bot con they were going to be just with their collection, we were they, we were just stunned. I mean, this is this is like. Do you remember that line? Oh yeah. my god! It was like the scream machine. Well, uh, Space Mountain. So, day. but day. but. What what would bring you? Why would why would you guys do it? Why would you give in the towel? Why would you stop? What would what would cause finances you to... have to be a big factor? I know I just got rid of about two thirds of my stuff when I moved into this condo. That is a perfectly reasonable reason. That's probably the reason I would say most people stop, or at least slow down. I mean, for me, it's mostly space. I don't if if I. Stopping would be hard for me because I don't have a I don't have a structure to my collection. I buy what I like. I'm not trying to complete something. If which kind of sucks because it just means I could just buy and buy and buy and you know when I'm dead, I'll just my house will show up like on you know Reddit or something is like this place where this you know the bulldozer had to come in and take out all the toys and. Use toilet paper, so uh, so yeah. Found the cat. You found the cat. Yeah, exactly. But no, I mean, so no, exactly. Fun, money. It get, it's an, it's not cheap, especially with all this third party junk. That's yeah. where Mister Fluffy Wiggles went. Nice. <laughs> no, he ran away. Oh, I miss. I mean, the, for uh, me. Go ahead, diecast. I'm uh, for me. I'm I'm at the same point Brian is. I'm just completely out of space and that's really frustrating because especially when you know i have stuff that's coming out that i want that i you know i feel like i need to buy now because if i don't buy it now i might not be able to get it um and the only thing i think that keeps me in right now is that i'm hoping that you know in the next couple of years i'm going to be able to buy a bigger house and then I'll actually have room for my collection so even though it's it's frustrating and it, it's hard right now because I just don't have anywhere to put it I'm not willing yet to give it up so and that, that, that's exactly what Andrew is saying he's saying that he wants to uh, move and partly is because of his collection if anything I want to thin out my collection before I move because I don't want to move at all I don't want to have to go through the hassle of boxing it up. I've done it three or four times at this point. I don't want to box it's it a all pain up. In the ass. It is. It is. I, I mean, I love collecting. I'm not giving up, but uh, at some point, you just have to say enough is enough. Yeah. I mean, most of my stuff is actually boxed. Uh, so, for a move, it wouldn't be that bad. The only thing I would really have to you know, take care of is the stuff that I actually have on the shelf that's not in boxes, because most of those are either probably, if they're third party, I still have the box, but everything else is probably thrown out. 
I, I, I threw away all my boxes. It was the best thing ever. I, yeah, never... I used to save boxes and card backs back when I first started, but that ran out of space real fast. I, I just recently got rid of all mine after like 15 or 16 years, and uh, I have not regretted it. I had to throw those out by the crate. Yes. Yeah, it's, that's what I need to do to make space is start getting rid of all card backs because it's, it's getting out of control already. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, know it would be another good reason to stop, or one of the reasons I would stop if there was anything like, you know, a house fire, and and God forbid, you know, I lost everything. That would be like that would be my my out. I'd be like I'm done. I wouldn't try and replace it. I mean, I think I've collected for too many years to try and start over again. Make sure uh, the actually that happened to my old roommate. He yeah. managed to move on and step, still kept collecting for a good while. That topic actually came up on TFYLP. And uh, make sure that your um, insurance actually covers your your collection. I wouldn't even know how to how to value it. You know what I mean? Neither would they. Yeah. Yeah. You're getting dollars. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it's just something everyone's going to have to, you know, put on that personal scale of judgment and say, okay, or I'm good. I've you know? st- I've st- I've stopped, or I would say I took breaks. Like so, I bought I hardly bought any Cybertron figures that came out. I know that that's bad because Cybertron is so great. Um, I bought I didn't buy many of the early. I guess I bought all of the early uh, classics figures that came out. But I did. I was not a completist with classics when it came out. It was really, really uh, animated. That's what that ended up getting me back into like a, a completist mode. Other than just a couple of figures, I ended up completing animated, and I really lost interest by the time, like uh, the Roadbuster. Oh. Yeah. Well, no. Uh, yeah, Prime. I I definitely was not a completist. Um, I guess the movie, if any anything, killed killed that for me. But um, but I I've taken breaks. And in that period, I ended up selling off a third to maybe half of my collection. And a couple of things I regret, but for the most part, you know, it's stuff that I can live without. Has anyone else? I mean, I think we've all, except for Rob and Don, have probably taken breaks. Maybe John. Well, the, the movie years are great because I don't have to buy any toys. I go in stages with just the stuff I find interesting, mostly. Yeah, I don't buy any movies, so. But I do like complete lines if I take the plunge. I remember, like, I sold off, when space became an issue, I sold off all of uh, the Unicron tr- trilogy, which took, like, two months. But uh, it felt kind of liberating to get rid of that much stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, the one thing I do regret, <clears throat> do not ask me why I did this. And even though I, like, turned a... Percentage-wise, I turned a real high profit, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, my biggest regret in selling anything in my collection was, um, what was it? Energon Ultra Magnus. Okay, so it was the recolor of, uh, what's his face? Overload, I guess. Yeah, Overload, yeah. I had, I think there's like two in the world. I had one. It was the (laughs) the version where he came with the mini-cons that were pictured on the back of his packaging. Oh, wow. Oh, which were later wow. switched, and I had that. I think there's a. I it may have been the only one in the world, but I think there's like two or three, maybe other ones. How'd you get that? I bought it off eBay when nobody really? was looking for like sixty dollars. Of course, everybody knows Ultra Magnus was an eBay exclusive. <laughs> and, uh, and I mean, I sold him for like three fifty or four hundred dollars. That's true. I needed the money in grad school, but like in hindsight, I could have like donated plasma. You know, like got into bum fights. I could have raised that four hundred bucks <laughs> in a in a in a more sensible way. That's a pretty good profit, though, and it's not really that great of a toy. I would. I, well, I think you did the right thing. The, the, I will say this: there are some toys that are not that great, but the rarity of just owning one sort of supersedes. It's like it's not that great of a toy, but there's not that many that I've got. Like right. Black yeah, even my dad, my dad gave me a hard time on that one. And he has no idea about Transformers. But, uh, yeah, he was like, so there was like two in the world and you sold it? And he kind of like stared at me. I was like, oh, I'm going to go <laughs> not, in the other room. Yeah, not helping. <laughs> no, no. Yes. 
I remember one time I found a uh, like a a Matt Hardy uh, Triple H combination figure on like a Triple H packaging. It was like the lower half of Triple H and the top half of Matt Hardy. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. I'll buy this and put it on eBay. And it sold for like $200. It was the, I've never, ever seen a packaging mistake like that before. And it was just like a rarity, like you said. But the first thing I thought was, oh, I got to sell this. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I, I I found the yellow Daredevil from Marvel Legends. The, oh, wow. Yeah. I, I said, oh, I wonder if this is rare. I just put it back on the shelf. <laughs> Went back oh, the next wow. day to get it. And it was old. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, uh, no, there's things I sold that I, I regret. I regret, I sold, like, all of the, all, all, most of my G1 <laughs> figures in one go. I sold them all to, uh, like, to, like, John Runsky <laughs> at BotCon one year. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll just sell these, a uh, hundred bucks. Uh, okay. I was just trying to get rid of them. That's what I do when I sell stuff. I just sell it to get rid of it. And I don't really take into consideration how stupid I am for selling it at, at a given price. Unless it's like something that is going to go for quite a bit, like when I sold um, my uh, Overlord, or when I sold that first uh, when I sold that first Brave Max I had, I ended up getting like seven times what I paid for it, which is kind of great, but kind of not at the same time because I had no idea that I was ever going to get that back, and I ended up having to spend quite a bit for it. Not as much as um, not as much as I you know actually got out of that one, but. I should have just kept it. Yeah. Any uh, any other thoughts around that? What's this no. getting rid of? Yeah, Rob. You, so, what what are your thoughts? You've been quiet around this. Which which worries me. <laughs> There's no end game in sight, guys. Uh, it's Rob, like, don't you live in an apartment? No. Are you, you, no, I live in a house with a oh, basement full of robots. <laughs> okay. There it's gonna is be a, like space has got to be a premium if you're. <laughs> I, I'm actually going to let you guys in on a little secret. I've been working in logistics my entire adult life. I can store anything conveniently. Not this. Yep, it can fit in a room, and so can I. I mean, I'm just looking at my collection, and it could, if I displayed it all, it could be too good size for. I. Let me let me figure out how this Skype thing works right quick. I'll drop some pictures of my collection in right yeah, now. Yeah, you can. We can. Yeah, don't don't worry, Rob. Don't worry about. Yeah, no, not okay for the for the podcast. They're not oh, a yeah, Skype yeah. conversation. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's like that end scene where you're like, oh, there's the Ark. Yeah, it's under a Rubbermaid container. Yeah, he's right. I've seen it. It's it's pretty bad. Sometimes I take a picture and people are like, oh, that's not so bad. It's like, well, here's the side view. <laughs> is it dangerous? Is it vertical? Yeah, it actually is. It, dangerous. it is dangerous. Um, I'm in the process of converting everything to bigger could, boxes. Did your mom that's ever cool. go down there, Rob? Uh, yeah. I could see your mom probably getting hurt by that. I think you. I think you. I think you or your brother would be fine. Uh, yeah, everything is fine, really. Because right, the garage outside is full of crap. If I had a nickel for every time someone said your mom would be hurt by that. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> but no, no, it's perfectly fine. Like, um, actually, right now I've been converting into bigger boxes. Just to, like I said, literally, it's like okay, these boxes are too small. I can put five of these boxes into one of that box, and now it doesn't take up as much room because the box condenses everything. Nah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's it's easy. You just got to put it into it, like. Every place I've been into, I've been able to just confine it. You know. Hey Rob, I have a question for you. What up? How do you determine what to display and what to keep in like perpetual storage? Oh, there's no displaying. You have I, like three things it on display. Goes right into a crate. No, no. I uh, my current living arrangement. For those who don't know, I'm taking care of my mother. Um, uh -huh. So I, I'm basically paying for her house. Uh, I have like some uh, a couple of shelves in my bedroom where new stuff are at. And everything, like after a place, everything gets boxed and put in the basement. Whenever I'm either put her in a home or sure she can take care of herself again and I get another place, I will just have another room for it. Like, and that's literally it. Like the computer room becomes my toy room where it's just like Rubbermaid containers and there's a computer. Like I'm really good at storing. Like there's uh, something thousand toys here. 
it is literally not a trouble for me. And when you guys say, like, I have an end game inside, I'm like, I don't even know what it's like not buying stuff. Like, I was actually thinking about listening to that TFYLP uh, episode. Uh, I have no clue what's like going into a store and not going to the toy section. Like, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, people don't do that. Yeah, you so don't, uh, you don't realize you're weird until you stop going. Oh yeah. yeah I I, so uh, Rob, don't say that. You're not weird. Black, dude, I we're do crazy. That at every show, it doesn't. It, or every show, every store, it doesn't matter if I walk out with something. I, I, I have to yeah. check. I, at uh, to, at a uh, Kmart a couple years ago at Black Friday, uh, like at 5 a.m., I was in toys, and another adult looked at me. He's like, "Oh yeah, this looks great." And I'm like, yeah, it's got uh, it's got great articulation. It's got good colors. I, th- I like the paint job on it. And he was getting it for his like seven year old, and I was getting one for, for me. <laughs> and yeah, there was one time. Actually, there was one time uh, when Energon was just coming out. I held the mic away from my head, actually. And it came through anyway. It's fine. <laughs> it was loud. Um, <laughs> when uh, Armada was tail ending and Energon was just coming out, you know how it kind of filters in? And Walmart had actually put the Energon stuff down a little bit from the Armada stuff. And I was kind of going through it there. And I didn't have no clue what I looked like. Like, I was actually, I had just gotten off my job. And I was wearing, like, a BotCon t-shirt. And I had my badge from work on, which was, like, in a lanyard. You know, not even consider thinking what I was looking like going through the boxes. And this woman with her child starts asking all these questions about Transformers. And I'm like, I just figured because they see me looking through the boxes. Because I'm like, down, like, seeing which ones they had. And I'm like, uh, da, 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 I need to, you know, just kind of what you do. And then, like, she goes, no, it's okay. He works for them. He knows everything about them. And I'm like, <laughs> they think I'm an employee of Hasbro. Because here I am with this shirt with, like, an Autobot symbol in the chest here, like, wearing a jacket, got this badge on, I'm like, they think I'm a rep. That's like every time I work in a Walmart, it, yeah. it, if I have a, you know, oh, blue dress polo pants shirt, and please. a shirt on, they yeah. think I'm a manager, and they're going, can you help me? Like, no, no, I'm Yeah, I've done that except at Target. Okay. I don't own red shirts anymore. Yeah. I don't, I, I just go in what I wear to work. Like, I'll have, like, a green shirt, and I'll go into Target, and somebody will be like, do you work here? And I, like, kind of take offense, and I shouldn't. I'm like, no, do you work here? <laughs> True story. You guys remember when Walmart did the smocks, Don? Where, was that before your time? I, or? Actually, I wore no, smocks. And, they're, and they're coming back. Oh, good, good. I like those smocks. <laughs> but, yeah. um, the smocks. I remember one time walking. Guys, this is a criminal thing I did, by the way. Um, well, maybe oh, not criminal. Are, are, just, you, are you the one? Well, maybe. Um, Probably. Let's just assume I, it's him and move on. You guys know uh, where the uh, customer service, well, the back where like the layaway area is, and there's like the bathrooms, and it goes into the warehouse or whatever? Yeah. I was totally in the store looking like, hey, I don't have anything again. And I go use the restroom, and I notice one of those smocks is just laying on some boxes near that door. I was like, there's so many people here. I could probably just go back there and see if they got anything. So I put the smock on. Just walk back into the back of Walmart. I was back there for like an hour, just like discovering Walmart. <laughs> like I got up, I was climbing ladders, and like, you need any help? No, I got it. Got a box knife. Thanks. You know what I mean? No one knew I did not work there. That's awesome. I'm like pushing boxes around, like, like I found the toys. No, they hadn't gotten any in. Oh my I was like, god! Went to the food section. Like, oh, here's the freezer. I discovered Walmart, and I left it. Like, put the smog back down because whoever's it is is going to get in trouble for leaving their smog laying around. And I left. You realize someone's going to listen to this and try this now? The, no, no, because no. now they're all blue polos. Uh, for now, that's. Uh... Hey, they sell blue polos yeah. at Walmart, guys. Just go. I'm wearing one. Walmart I got this there. blue polo at Walmart. And the thing is. I literally, one time when I was between jobs, I worked at Walmart for exactly one week before I quit for, like, you know, it's just between jobs. I was just a paycheck till I got hired by this place I was waiting for. And I was like, this day, I have spent more time in the stockroom of Walmart than the week I was actually employed by Walmart. Because that whole week, I was just sitting around like, yeah, whatever. Can you stock that? F you. <laughs> waiting on a <the> call. <laughs> okay. 
I think that'll do it. Don, Don, Don's head's hurting a little. Like he just invaded Walmart. Yep. Okay. I've been bringing that story for years. Yep. Do, do you guys talk about me? Because I'm sure other people's done it. Yep. <laughs> That's. I've thought about doing it at <laughs> other stores. Okay. I, let, me, never... let, me say, let me say this, guys. Please do not do that to any in, store. Any in any store. The point that no one no, noticed me. It can get you arrested. <laughs> In no one today, noticed. In today's society, you could get arrested. That is bad. <laughs> society. Don't well, not do this. That's like a bad show. You don't want to watch that or do What's that. What's cracking me up still, and it was like a while back. No one noticed I was not supposed to be back there. Well, I mean, they, there's, <laughs> there's so much so turnover. There, there's there's yes. so much turnover, and there's so many people in the store. I mean, it's you're a new hire, as far as they know. That guy's in here all the time. <laughs> Yeah. Don is like, lockdown, lockdown. <laughs> okay. We found him. <laughs> That'll do it. That's the show. <laughs> I'm going to shoot you, Rob. You'll get me fired. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for being on. <laughs> Don's all worried. Like, do not do that. <laughs> I'm doing it again this there's weekend. A guy, there's a guy in sporting goods who carries a loaded pistol. <laughs> okay. John's going to be checking people's name tags now. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to edit all this out. So everybody have a good show. <laughs> everybody have said that was the end of the show. That's it. We're done. Have a good one. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Happy 381st episode. Rob Zeeble. Again. Again. See you later. This has been Radio Free Cybertron. Visit us at tfradio.net for show notes and to subscribe to the podcast. Follow us on Twitter at TF Radio for news and updates. Watch our live stream at tfradio.net slash live. Join our Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash tfradio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, TF Radio Network. Have a question or comment? Leave it on our Facebook fan page or mail it to contact at tfradio.net. This podcast is released under a Creative Commons license. Any part of this podcast can and should be redistributed, but please, proper attribution is required if you know what's good for you. Radio Free Cybertron, the original Transformers internet radio show since 1999. 100% girlfriend free since 1999. Time now for a podcast about two guys, one named Rob and one named Brian, and they talk to each other about stuff they're actually reading online at that moment. So Rob, you know, we've all had, you know, times when we ate something we probably shouldn't have, or, you know, we got some sort of funny stomach bug, and we pooped our pants. Well, that's called diarrhea. And it actually comes from uh, the ancient Greek diapoia, uh, which means through and flow. It's uh, the condition of having at least three loose or liquid bowel movements each day. You know, I've heard about this, Brian. And do you know it often lasts for a few days and can result in dehydration due to fluid loss? Signs of de dehydration often begin with loss of normal stretchiness of the skin and changes in personality. This can progress and decrease urination, loss of skin color, and a fast heart rate. And a decrease in responsiveness that becomes more severe. I hate when I get fast heart rates. Especially when it comes to diarrhea, Brian. Yes. You know, but loose but not watery stools and babies who are breastfed, that may be normal. Wow. You know, I've heard the, the most common cause is is an infection of the intestines due to either a virus, bacteria, or parasite, a condition known as gastroenteritis. Yes, gastroenteritis. <laughs> I've had that before. <laughs> that, well, as we call it here in Georgia. These infections are often acquired from food or water that has been contaminated by stool or directly from other person that is infected. 
You know, it may be divided into three types. There's uh, the short duration watery diarrhea, uh, short duration bloody diarrhea. That's that's when that one's bad to that have. Hurts. And if it lasts for more than two weeks, pers- it's uh, persistent diarrhea. I, you know, I've never had that one, but you know, it'll happen eventually. So I'm going to check that one off the list at some point. You know, the short duration watery diarrhea may be due to, to an infection by cholera. If blood is present. It's also known as dysentery, and that's bad. That used that to kill me. All, that used to kill me all the time in Oregon Trail. I, I'm telling you, I never. You know, it's just you say, "Hey, I just pooed to death." Yeah. A number of non-infectious causes may also result in diarrhea, including hyperoidism, lactose intolerance, inflammatory bowel disease, which causes diarrhea. A number of medications and irritable bowel, irritable bowel syndromes. In most cases, stool cultures are not required to confirm the exact cause. 